this particular wonder has been studied and researched and a lot of information is given about it. Some of the information is as follows. It covers over 13 acres on a plateau that it is made a lot of basalt because it's not too wild from the Nile River, if you will. That it is an equal lateral triangle that it soars some 481 feet to the air with four sides at the base of the 750 feet long. And the distance between the top and the corner, what do they call the apex and one corner again, is the same as the base, which means it is a perfect equilateral triangle, four-sided wonder, if you will. It weighs close to six million tons, and is composed of two million five hundred thousand blocks of stone. I like to stop with that because when you say two million five hundred thousand blocks of stone, we may think about the bricks that we see our buildings built on, or we may think of a big concrete pillar. But these blocks of stones are very interesting because of the 2,500,000 blocks that compose this pyramid structure. The smallest one weighs three and three quarter tons. Now, you can begin to say that's good, but I like to have people identify. When you use your mind, when you think, when you fantasize, when you get into something, it has more of a potential for you. Now, I like to get the idea. Uh, let's just say a small car. Most cars now are going to be pretty big once again. But a small car, some of the fellas or some of the young ladies, the sisters, the brothers, tell me what you think a small car would weigh. The prototype you see running around the street now. So give me a name of a car and how much you think it weighs. Yes. Ton and a half. Which car is that name? <laughs> okay. Uh, it's 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 stable. Stable, okay. Give me another car, someone. Right? About 5,000. About 5,000 pounds or tons? Pounds. Pounds? Okay. Another guess is one of the uh, other Let me give them an idea of what you think of the car weighs. <laughs> one more. Come on. Somebody, let me hear a man. A ram truck weighs about uh, two tons. All right. How many? Two. Two tons. That means that the smallest brick stone whatever you want to call it, in the Great Pyramid. Weighs as much as what kind of a truck? A ram truck. A ram truck. Okay. It weighs more than that. Now keep that in mind when you understand that close to three, I'm sorry, uh, that, that one wrong. Close to one and a half million of them are the size of ram trucks, the weight of ram trucks. You start talking about now the stones in the Great Pyramid. One and a half million ram trucks waiting in there. When we begin to look at it even further, that means that some of these stones that are used there, if you want to call them stones, weigh 100 tons. Now you're talking about a, an airplane. You're talking about an airplane with full cargo and passengers on board. And when you begin to talk about that and you start thinking, that maybe 50 of them weigh that. You got really a tremendous item here. So let's move even further. In the King's Chamber and lay on an angle up the Grand Gallery and in what is called the Queen's Chamber, these are the names that have been given, you have stone granite structures that weigh close to 300 tons each. 300 tons tons each. Use your imagination now. Just went to the ram truck where they just counted. Now we got 10 or so things weighing 300 tons each made of granite. One of the hardest substances known to man. When we look even further on with this, we find that they say it was between 2,686 B.C. 2,181 B.C. that this structure was built in mind is figured now. And that it was built for a pharaoh who utilized 100,000 slaves working night and day for 20 years to get it erected. And once the 
who was erected there, of course, he was buried there. Now, before we get into the story of the burial, the story of all of this, I don't want to skim over anything. Because when I take you on this way out trip, if you're going to be hopefully going with me this evening, I want the groundwork to have been laid. So you don't say, well, you skimmed over the heavy part, you got into the esoteric metaphysical mess, but you didn't handle the details. Stay with me, we will handle the details. Okay. Let's question one of the details right quickly. Usually in the movie by Gerald Zelnick or C.C. B. DeMille, they are the rank, all deceased greatly now. <laughs> they begin to, you heard that. <laughs> they begin to set off a movie by which Yul Brynner and Charlton Heston are sitting up there in the Pharaoh and his first mate, I'm sorry, gendarmes, whoever the general is at that time. And in the distance, they're building the great pyramid structure. And as they build it in the distance, they're talking about who they're going to conquer and what women they're going to have and how much money they're going to bring back to Egypt. And then zoom, Charlton Heston's off, Hesson, off making money, women, and uh, whatever else they're going to do. And he comes back, of course, when he comes back to Egypt, the wonder of wonders is already built. There in the distance is a pyramid. Now, wouldn't it be nice if that's all that you really had to do? You talk about it, you go off and do what you got to do, you come back up the same age, and there it stands the great pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> that always amazed me, but I said, well, they are the rank of Joe's government put in the money so they can do what they want to do. And that same kind of thought process I find is entered into the so-called professors in these colleges, universities, and teachers in high schools. Hope I'm not talking about it. <laughs> for your teaching and saying the same thing that those producers of the movie said, and in those encyclopedias and books is the same kind of printed information. I choose that word here. Information about the great period. 100,000 slaves were united days for the great pharaoh to be buried there again. So many feet on a here. When we move Further with that, though, we have to begin to question this plateau, these builders, and the like. First of all,